William Schlaff. I'm the professor and chairman of obstetrics and gynecology at Jefferson Medical College, Thomas Jefferson University. I uh, grew up in Detroit and went to Yale University as an undergraduate with a bachelor's degree in political theory. Uh, I then went to the University of Michigan Medical School and was a resident in obstetrics and gynecology there. I uh, spent two years as a general OBGYN doctor at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore and then did a fellowship there. Uh, and then was on the faculty there for the better part of five years, during which I also did a postdoc at the Oregon Primate Center in Portland, uh, looking at fertility in monkeys. Uh, in 1989, I was recruited to start the Division of Reproductive Endocrinology at the University of Colorado, where I was professor and vice chairman for 17 years, and there for a total of 22, before being recruited here to Philadelphia. Well, I'm, as chairman of ob at Jefferson, I'm on the faculty, and I see patients at Jefferson Hospital. Um, I've done a lot of things professionally in the past, uh, primarily with the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, the American Board of OBGYN, um, and some other organizations. I've been uh, uh, on the board of directors of the American Society for Reproductive Medicine. I've been president of the Society for Reproductive Endocrinology and Infertility. Well, when I was a resident, this was actually a field that didn't exist. Uh, reproductive endocrinology uh, as a discipline was about uh, people with hormonal problems. Uh, infertility was about surgery because there was really not very much one could do besides operate on women. So if there were obstructed tubes, you could fix that, uh, though the outcomes in terms of pregnancy weren't very good. Women who didn't ovulate, you could help correct in certain circumstances, but in vitro fertilization wasn't even developed until the late 70s and in the U.S. really wasn't started until the early 80s, which is when I was finishing my training. It was a very, very exciting time, uh, and I was actually at the first IVF conference in the United States, which was, in, as I recall, 1981 or 82 in Carmel, California, and there were only enough people to fill a relatively modest-sized room. I'd love to tell you a good day is when everything turns out right, all, all the patients are happy, um, the 24 full-time faculty members and 70 full-time employees in our department are happy. Uh, we have three grants and five papers are accepted into major uh, journals, and no one is mad at me. That would be a really good day. Well, it's special for a couple reasons, maybe more than a couple. It's special because of the people who are part of RMA Jefferson, and, and, and here I'm really talking about the docs. Um, it's not to, to diminish anyone else, but uh, it's really interesting to find really seven people who share the same viewpoint, the same commitment uh, to taking the best care of patients, the same discipline, self-discipline and, and group discipline, uh, the integrity uh, and the commitment to do things the way they're supposed to be done because that's the way we were all brought up. That's unique. Uh, it's unique because five of the docs are very, very well trained and have been in private practice for quite some time but have an academic bent. And two of the docs have been in an academic position, in my case, for over 35 years, in Dr. Callan's case, a little bit less than that, uh, but at the same time have a huge amount of practice experience. Uh, and then the unique part is how do you bring these two disparate groups of people, not disparate in attitude or quality of care, but disparate in the discipline in which they work, and bring them together in a way where organizationally it makes sense. And this has never been done before quite like this. Uh, it can only work because there are seven unique people involved in the whole process of marrying the best of an academic practice with the best of a private practice. Well, my primary hobby that I share with Marty Friedman is that we are very longtime baseball fans going back to our high school days together in Detroit. Uh, he's adopted the Phillies. I've been here two years. I haven't quite adopted the Phillies, but I'm still a season ticket holder for the Colorado Rockies, and I'm assuming that I'm annoying a lot of people here. Um, I also take care of a family who take care of me back. Um, my wife is a maternal fetal medicine geneticist, and I have three teenage kids, uh, one college student and two high school students. Uh, and anybody who has teenage kids understands that that's a full-time job. I think the most important thing that a, a patient could anticipate is that the couple, and I do mean the couple because sometimes we overlook the fact that it's not just one person usually, uh, but the couple is going to have an honest opinion that will be based on evidence uh, that will take into account the previous history, that will be an informed decision that they will have based on the best evidence available in a setting where 
we can provide anything in terms of treatment that anybody can by extremely experienced and qualified people.